hey guys what's going on so in this video we'll be learning about git and git is a source code management tool or you can say more specifically as a version control system now the question may arise why you need to learn git so git is really helpful when you're working on really large projects and uh, when you're working on a team or you're collaborating with someone so git is really helpful over there and we will look into it why how git is really helpful in these fields so the main aim of this video is to familiarize you with git and uh, what are the advantages of git uh, what is git and how to use git and why to use git as developers what git has to offer so this lecture is going to be a kind of a small theory a uh, small talk as you can say uh, to introduce you to the git so let's look at what we will be covering in this course the first module that is in this lecture we will be having a short introduction to git uh, where we will find out what git is and why it is used now in the second module we will be installing git we'll be having quick setups to get you up and running and the third module that is basic and advanced git we will start off right from the basics we will incrementally understand git in depth okay cool so let's start with the introduction to git part so whenever i say git one thing might strike in your mind so whenever i say git you might have heard of git as a version control right so let's understand what version control is so version control is the practice of tracking and managing changes to a software code so basically when you're working on a project you might do lots of cuts copies modifications changes so version control really helps in managing these and keeping a track of all this say suppose you are working on a project say a calculator and suddenly uh, you created another python file from where you want to import some calculate calculator functions so uh, making use of version control is really helpful because if you have created a version of calculator project that you want to incorporate into the present calculator project you can do that with the help of version control and that is one of the many advantages that git has to offer so for now version control means it's the practice of tracking and managing changes to the software code so what is git so as i told you before git is a version control tool and it is widely accepted by developers because of it being the de facto standard now developer community loves git it has been their go-to version control for years now and one advantage of git is that it is open sourced and so there are tons of add-ons available for git like git kraken tower that enhance the git usage and then git uses a distributed decentralized development strategy so we'll be looking at what decentralized distributed version control is in this upcoming slides so now for now it just understand that it maintains a separate local code base where developers can interact with it instead of directly interacting with the centralized code base and third is that git works offline since because git is offering an option to maintain a code locally in your system so you don't need to have an internet to work or manage your code you can you can just download the git bash which will be downloading very soon and we can make use of it to create a local git repository and we can manage our codes there so it basically works offline and you can connect your git to a remote repository say github bitbucket and things like that so if you want your work to be seen by others uh, you can make use of Git to publish your work into these major platforms like GitHub. So, so for the most part, Git helps you work offline and track and manage your code. And the fourth is Git is executed in Git CLI or Git Bash. So one thing to note here is that Git CLI or Git Bash is, is a tool through which you, it's a command line interface uh, you can download to work with Git. Otherwise, if you are a Mac OS user or Linux user, you can directly use a terminal and configure Git and uh, in command prompt also in windows we can use git but to know that perfect extent so i recommend you to download git cli which we'll be covering in the setting up git part which is the second module now when when it comes to me i make use of git very extensively here as you can see that since i'm working on a project uh, there are lots of things to be changed lots of things to be tracked tracking new files tracking modified files tracking deleted files so for that i make use of git so let me quickly open git bash so if you do, if you don't understand what i'm doing right now uh, no need to worry because I am just showing you that I make use of git a lot and it really helps me. So if I open git bash and if I type ls space minus la, I can see that there is a dot git repository somewhere over here. So it is not visible here but there is a dot git repository right above PyCache. One disadvantage as I told you that if you are uh, configuring from with command prompt you can't actually type the linux commands like ls space minus la you can't do that so i recommend if you are a windows user download a git bash and you can work with it now i'll be telling you how to configure git bash and how to make use of git bash in the next lecture okay so coming back so remember i told you about distributed and decentralized now let's understand them much better let's get to know what is centralized development strategy 
So in a centralized development strategies, there is a centralized code base, which is generally hosted online. So whenever I re refer to a repo or repository, just understand that it is a code base, a collection of codes. Okay, so there's a centralized repository or a code base which is hosted online and there's an administrator who can control what goes to whom. So developers like us would have to connect to this centralized repository and then administrator will give us a working copy. Now when I mention working copy, which means that not all the codes from the centralized repository is being given to the developers like us. The reason being that administrator has the full control and he can give a specific part to a person. So, so ultimately these guys won't be getting the full code that is present in the centralized repository, only a per certain allowed permitted working copy. Now this is in complete contrast to what we have in distributed development. So in distributed development strategy, uh, there is a centralized repository and each client gets a full, full code that is present in that centralized repository. So not only that, the developers can also in addition create a local repository through which they can experiment with it. So, in, so as to say, each developer has full access to the remote repository and, ex and can experiment with it. Now, one advantage of this is in the contrary to centralized development strategy is that, let me go back. In centralized development strategy, the biggest disadvantage is called as single point of failure. So since the centralized repository is hosted online and there's only one centralized repository, so if suppose uh, the centralized repository goes down or there's some problem, in that in those cases you can't do anything you can't have established communication to a centralized repository you can't commit you can't add the changes and things like that so whenever you're working with a centralized repository you need to be in constant touch with the centralized code base otherwise you won't be able to do any sort of modifications but in case of distributed development strategy you will be getting a full repository which means you can maintain a local repository on your own on your local system and you can experiment with it now even if this centralized repository is down one can still commit the changes to his own local repository and push it to the centralized repository when it becomes online or it becomes available so in this way the entire work system or workflow is not broken the another thing that we talk about git is remember we talked about branched workflow so workflow by using git is not linear we can have branches depicting different features of a product. So in this illustration, as you can see that there are two branches, but in general, you can have as many branches as you want. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is that Git maintains two types of branches in generally, and they, they, they are called master and feature branches. The master branch is where your finalized product codes reside, whereas feature branch is where you experiment with or add new features. And when satisfied, you merge it with the master branch to add new features to the product. So let's take the example of calculator as well. So when I'm working on a calculator, say on the master branch, I'll be having a codes for the calculator, finished codes for calculator. Just suppose if I want to add an add functionality, what I can do is I, instead of directly writing the codes on the master branch, I can create an, another feature branch called add. And in that I can write the codes for adding. And uh, when I'm satisfied with the addition, I can then merge that feature to the master branch and then that feature will be reflected in the master branch. Okay, so this was a short introduction to Git where we actually found out what Git is and why we use Git. We also got to know what are the certain advantages of using Git, distributed development, branched workflow, uh, de facto standard. And this is, let me tell you, tip of the iceberg. You are going to learn a lot and in the industry, Git is important because majority of, con majority of companies make use of Git to manage their source code and projects. Okay, so that was all for this video. Alright guys, see you in the next lecture.